180 degrees, you can see that the kingpin leans backwards a whole lot more, which is increased grip. Hey guys, what's up at Actions here and welcome back to this brand new video. And today it is time to dive into the world of caster and camber in kart racing. So before we can get into tuning your caster and camber on your kart, we first have to understand what caster and camber are. And if you are familiar with racing or watch Formula 1 or play the F1 games, then you might know a little bit about this. Caster is the angle with which your front tires are mounted to your chassis when you look at it from the side. When the top of the tires lean towards the back of the kart, that's positive camber and that gives more grip. When the top of your tire leans to the forward of your vehicle, that is negative camber and that will give you less grip. Really, it's as simple as that. Now with the car, you can have both caster on the front and the rear wheels, but here we can only have it on the front wheels of course because we have that solid rear axle with the cart. Now camber is the angle with which the wheels are mounted to the chassis when you look at it from the front. So basically very exaggerated it's this or this. Positive camber is when the top of the wheels point outward from the vehicle so like this like a V shape. And negative camber you might know it from some weird riser videos like these ones. <laughs> But negative camber is when the top of the wheels point towards each other when you look at it from the front. Now camber is a little bit more tricky when it comes to handling, but there's a general rule of thumb. If you add negative camber to your cart, so the wheels will be like this, that is more grip in the corner, so like uh, grip like this sideways, but less longitudinal grip. So you can expect the car to be a little bit more stable on turning, but have a lot more grip in the corner. And of course, doing the opposite will have the reverse effect of that. Now with the car, you can adjust the camber and caster by adjusting the entire suspension system. But of course, a car doesn't have that. And it works slightly differently, but of course, the end result will be the same. And to explain how it works, we have to take a little bit of a closer look at this thing. All right, people. So here we have the front stub axle of my beautiful LN card. So normally, uh, the front tire would be connected to here, but it's off right now. Uh, well, here you can see the entire system. It goes all the way to the steering. And if I turn this wheel right here, the front stub axle will move. And if we then move to this angle, you can see that the chassis actually already comes with quite a lot of positive casters. So it's leaning backwards. If you look at it from the side, you can see it even more clearly. It's definitely tilted that way. But in here, we can play around with the camber and caster a whole lot more. And I'll show you guys how that works. All right. In order to explain caster and camber on the card a little bit better to you guys, I have taken apart the right front. So in a card, you have your stub axle here and then the kingpin here and it is mounted like this to the chassis. So right now it's kind of in a neutral position and as you can see if we just move it around like this you can change caster and camber by quite a big margin. But of course you need something to keep this bolt here so that you know it doesn't move around while driving. And for that they have invented the eccentric ring. So this is a 5 degree eccentric ring. What that means is that the hole for the kingpin of this ring is off center by five degrees and you might not be able to tell but if i then hold a zero degrees next to it which is which does have the hole in the middle you can see that there's quite a big difference and i think you can imagine where i'm going with this let's say we have the five degree eccentric ring and we put it right here we then take the stub axle put the kingpin through it you can see that we now have five degrees of caster because we have the hole towards the back which means that the whole stub axle is tilted that way. But with this eccentric ring, we can not only increase the amount of grip, so five degrees positive, but we can also decrease the amount of grip, five degrees negative. And it's really just as simple as taking uh, pointy nose pliers, putting it in the holes and just twisting around the ring 180 degrees. And now we have five degrees of negative caster. If you rotate it 180 degrees, you will of course change the amount of caster, but if you actually change it just a little bit, you can also add five degrees of camber to your card. Now that's the top eccentric ring. We also have one at the bottom. And really at the bottom, it is the same principle. We also now have a five degrees eccentric ring here at the bottom. And like I just said, it comes with the arrow pointing forward, or in this case, the three dots. But if we then take the eccentric ring at the bottom and twist it by 180 degrees, you can see that the kingpin leans back a whole lot more. This is really an extreme amount of grip. Also rotated 180 degrees at the top, they cancel each other out again and you get a total negative effect. Now guys, like I've just told you, the standard OTK card only comes with a three degree eccentric ring. And with that, you can do some setup changes, but not a whole lot. But that's only three degrees. If you want to have a full range of setup, I recommend getting one of these things. So this is a caster kit and it has the whole range of zero degrees all the way to five degrees in there. So you have a whole lot of room to play around with. And you guys are lucky because with my sponsor K Racing, you can get a 20% discount on this kit. 
If you head over to their website, put this in your basket and add the code CASTER20, you will get a 20% discount on this thing, which is huge. Also, there will be a 10% discount on a whole lot of other parts related to the steering system of a cart. You can find the full details in the pinned comment down below. Go check it out, save money, shop at K-Racing and use my code CASTER20. Last time I used the zero degree eccentric rings at the top, so less grip and that was a big improvement. Alrighty, so start by removing the wheel hub and if you're at the track, remove the tire first of course. For that, you need a 22mm rattle. And just put that here for now. Good, alright. Next, you need to remove the four retaining screws, two on the top and two at the bottom of course. And for that, you need a 2.5mm Allen key. So, this one, this one, and then at the bottom of course, and this one. So now that the four retaining screws are removed, time to remove the entire system. And to do that, we need to remove the entire kingpin, which is the bolt that I just showed you that is in here. So for that, you need a 7mm Allen key and a 17mm wrench. So let's go to work. Like that. I recommend doing the last bit by hand because there's a ring on top of the nut right here. I don't know if you can see it, you probably can. But if you don't hold it by hand, it will fall. And if you do it like this, it won't fall. And then with your middle finger, gently push here. And you can see the entire system pops out already. And make sure to keep your hand here because there's a whole lot of stuff that will fall out of here. Like that. And just gently let it dangle down there. Don't put force on there because this track rod can easily bend. And also guys, pro tip for me, uh, please remember what ride height you were with because of course with these things you can determine your ride height. I was in the standard ride height, so that's uh, one here, one here. Well, one's on the floor now. All right, so now that you have completely broken down your system, time to get the eccentric rings you want. Head over to your caster kit. And I already have the zero degree one installed on there. And let's pick it from here as well. So, zero degrees. You can tell it's zero degrees because there's no dots. And of course, in here you have a description which also tells you what they are. So zero slash blank, which is this one, is no caster. And of course, the five one is maximum caster which you can see over here. So to put it back together again, really simple. Just put the ring in here, make sure it is aligned with the screws. Take your screws and put them in here by hand only a little bit. And also guys, before you just slap it in, take care. There's a right, tiny R over here, which indicates that it's for the right side. And of course the other one will have an L there indicating left side. Then because we are keeping it stuck at the bottom one, just put the three degrees back in there. Same as the top one. Make sure to put it in here correctly and align these little lines with the holes. Then grab your little screws again and just gently, gently put them in. All right, next, gather all the parts you just removed. So kingpin, the height adjusters and the ring and the nut. Then the next part is a little bit tricky to do by yourself, but I'm going to try it anyways. Grab your stub axle, put it back here. Put this, the height ring in between there. Then take a kingpin and try to immediately stab everything, there we go, so it stays in position. And then at the bottom, again, same thing, put the ring there, take the kingpin and try to push it through in one go. No, we didn't do it. Get it through the ring, there we go. So now we have it almost back together again, all we need to do now is add the ring at the bottom again and put the nut on there by hand a little bit. Then what I like to do next is tighten the tiny screws. And of course, don't forget the ones at the bottom as well. So once you've tightened the screws, it's time to tighten the kingpin again. So with that, you need the seven millimeter Allen key again, 17 millimeter wrench, and just tighten. And make sure to tighten it well, because of course you don't want this to come loose while you're driving. And then to finish off, after you've tightened the kingpin, make sure to tighten the little screws again as well. All right guys, that was it for this side. We have successfully changed it from three degrees positive caster to zero degrees, so neutral. And the effect that this will have is that it will have just less front end bite. Really, it's as simple as that. So now it's time to just put the wheel hub back on there. And then to be extra sneaky, we get the caster kit again, take out these magnetic things, and then we can put them on our eccentric rings so that no one can see what caster you are running. All right guys, so now that you know how to adjust your caster and camber, let's go over some situations and let's talk about what you can do in those situations. So if you turn in and you feel that your back end starts sliding, it's a really good idea to take out the three degrees eccentric ring and replace it with the zero degrees one. We did that last time in our vlog as well. And by the way, if you haven't seen that one, go check it out. And that was uh, a massive improvement to the cart. And let's say uh, it's only 10 minutes until your next race and it completely starts raining and you have no time to move to a proper wet setup. What you could do is, uh, well, if you're on standard caster, 
take the bottom eccentric ring and turn it around 180 degrees. That way you will make the, uh, the kingpin lean more backwards, which of course will give you more grip. Now if you want more tips like these or are a little bit confused, then I would strongly recommend joining my Discord server. We now have over a thousand members and most of them are characters from all over the world. And there's a whole lot of knowledge saved there in our little forum, as I like to call it. Go join it, link is in the pinned comments. Anyways guys, that was it for this video. Now if you found it useful or just enjoyed it in any way, shape or form, then I would appreciate it enormously if you would consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons. Also, don't forget to shop at K-Racing, use the code CASTER20 to save 20% on the CASTER kit and also to save 20% on all OTK steering system parts and of course the sniper laser. On screen right here you'll have a playlist with all types of other setup videos, but for now, that was it. Peace.